Today is Friday of the fourth week of Ordinary Time, and we're gathered today in Dahlgren Chapel on the campus of Georgetown University. By now, you've read Mark's account of the slaying of John the Baptist. Now, read Oscar Wilde's play, Salome. Then, look at the pen and ink illustrations by Aubrey Beardsley. These works capture the essence of the English decadence, the literary movement of the 1890s. And it certainly was decadent, both the era and the play. Not in the sense of what we would now call being X-rated, but in the sense of moral corruption, human degradation, and evil. King Herod married his deceased brother's widow in contravention of Jewish law in order to retain power. He lusted after his stepdaughter, Salome, convincing her to dance for his dinner guests. He had John the Baptist killed and decapitated to avoid his own public shame, then presented Salome, the head of John the Baptist, as a trophy. Wilde, who knew something of decadence himself, imbued the story and the characters with the full measure of voluptuousness and lasciviousness that the story imputes to them. Unfortunately, this story would find a home in our own culture, hence its interest among directors and actors like Ken Russell and Al Pacino. So, lest we get caught up in such decadence, you and I must continue to heed the warning in our first reading. Remain emotionally detached from that which can lead us astray, like pursuing money for what it buys materially and socially. Live in reality, in truthfulness, by remaining in solidarity with prisoners and those who are ill-treated or suffering and marginalized, among many others. Our detachment from what misleads and our engaging with what is real will lead us to the humility of recognizing how much dysfunction, risk, and threat confront us. This engagement will help us see that we control much less of our destinies than we would like to admit. With that crucial insight, we realize with new force our need for divine assistance. The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Says the author of our first reading, quoting Psalm 118. The question is rhetorical because lots of human institutions, lots of the faceless people we encounter, and even the people we know, can do us a lot of harm. And yet, today's psalm, Psalm 27, repeats the theme, putting the emphasis where it belongs. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? This is a terrific psalm to read in its entirety. The poetic power of the King James Version mirrors the exalted promise. The promise is that God is always with us, no matter what happens to us. He will lead us, as Psalm 23 promises, through the valley of the shadow of death. The Father led Jesus through this lonesome valley into resurrection and new life. God will do the same for you and for me. Let's give thanks to God today for all that is good. For he is good, his mercy is everlasting. <laughs> 